Star Trek Nemesis. Star Trek 10 Nemesis. Nemesis. Yeah. I was doing a play in New York, 1776, and uh, the woman who played my wife in the, in the play, Linda Eamon, who's a brilliant actress, uh, said a friend of hers was coming to see the show and wanted to meet me. And uh, I said, great, let's go out after the show. And um, that person turned out to be John Logan. And uh, John had been a huge fan of the series, and, and uh, so we, we became friends, and we, you know, through time have remained really good friends. So uh, he said to me at one point, I would like nothing more than to write a Star Trek movie. Actually, what happened was we wrote a story together, just on spec, uh, and uh, there was no guarantee there was going to be a movie at that point, but they were, there was rumblings that they thought, maybe let's do one more with this cast. And um, as a matter of fact, I don't think the studio really wanted to do another one with us, but I think Rick did. I think Rick's idea was, there's no point in doing another one right now unless you use these guys. They're the guys. And so, uh, Sherry was running the studio at the time and she agreed and they, you know, set about to do another one. And John and I wrote this story and uh, we presented it to Rick and Rick read it and he didn't really like it. He thought it was, um, it wasn't that he didn't like it. He just thought, it dealt with an alternative reality where we were playing two, of everybody was two, uh, was playing two different people. And he felt they'd done too much of that in, in the series and it didn't really make sense and he didn't really understand alternative reality and let's don't do that. But he was really happy to have John come in uh, and give it another shot. And so the three of us sat around and came up with another story and um, we presented it uh, that we thought was pretty good and then Patrick read it and he didn't care for it. So we worked on it some more and then the studio didn't like it. Uh, and then we worked on it some more, and then everybody liked it. So we, that's how we wound up with uh, Nemesis. About time, Mr. Data. My mission was a success, sir. I have located the source of the radiation. This entire ship is essentially a Thaleron generator. Its power relays lead to an activation matrix on the bridge. It's a weapon. It would appear so. Patrick's objection, I think, originally was that it, it was, in the first draft of it, it was going to require him to play things he'd already played, in, uh, particularly in Generations. That there was a, a kind of a somber quality about his character that he didn't really want to explore any more of, that he felt he'd done it already. Originally, I think in the first draft we did, Shinzon, the villain, was right. actually Patrick's son uh, that he had thought had died years before. But he didn't want to have to, to really play that, because he had played that sort of already. And uh, uh, so, so we made him a clone. And everybody seemed to kind of enjoy that idea. I can see as well as you can. I can feel everything you feel. In fact, I feel exactly what you feel. Don't I, Jean-Luc? I wrote, I'll tell you what I wrote. I wrote, believe it or not, action beats. I mean, I kind of worked on the story with them, but uh, John would call me and say, uh, we've got them on the other ship, and uh, how do they get off? And uh, I said, they fly, they steal a little ship and fly it through the ship and fly out, you know, and uh, he was like, great idea, let's do that. That, unfortunately, had we had the budget that this last movie had, that would have been a phenomenal sequence because what he wrote was amazing. But we had, we didn't have big budgets. We had smaller budgets. So um, we had to make that happen in 10 seconds as opposed to the two or three minutes of this ship flying through the other ship. I was in the in the idea of uh, the two ships coming together and and one group jumping from because I said uh, I think my idea was sort of a Captain Blood thing you know where it was uh, 
you know, how they used to crash into ships and, and they do it now in Pirates of the Caribbean and, and they swing onto one ship from the other ship. That was sort of what I wanted to see. But we were writing the story and we got to a point where either Picard or Data had to had to sacrifice himself. And it made a lot more sense for Data to do it because his programming had always been about uh, serving humanity. And it seemed to me a really sensible journey he made from Pinocchio to giving his life. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not sure why people didn't like that. To me, it made a lot of sense. And there was an opening because B4 at the end is programmed with Data's memories. And, you know, it, very easily we could see him again. Only now he is Data because he's uh, ex accessed all of Data's memories. Or Dr. Sung, who invented uh, Data and Lore and B4, uh, he may have had an actual blood son that we could meet who was a scientist who created a brand new android who could be some kid who then does the next 20 movies, you know? Anything could happen. A Star Trek, yeah. My brother was not human. And the fact of the matter is, I'm too old to play the part. People always say, no, no, you're not too old. You can say you had an aging chip and all. But why, why, you know, why compromise everything just so you can keep doing it? It's like, you know, where when I was young and or ish and started doing it, um, it was okay to be childlike, but it, there was something kind of, uh, uh, I don't know, it just didn't land as well to be childlike uh, when you're, you know, in your 90s. It just didn't feel right. To family. None of the other actors ever got to do it again either, you know. Um, it wasn't like, he, I, I didn't die, <laughs> you know. And it is Star Trek, and it is, you know, we did 178 hours plus four films. So that's, you know, about 185 hours of, of a character. I didn't feel cheated at the end of it, and uh, I, I don't think anyone else did. We to a person all still see each other. And I just did a play and uh, Marina came and Gates came and Dorn came and LeVar tried to come and uh, Jonathan tried to come but their schedules didn't allow it and Patrick's in London and he was like, oh, I can't believe I'm not gonna be in LA while you're doing it. Um, we see each other every Christmas. We eat lunch together all the time. We have dinner together. We talk on the phone. We're like, you know, really extended family. So it didn't really end uh, for us.